Hi, this is Jeff Heen. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to look at word to vec which is a pre-trained model that you can get from Google and other sources that help you with natural language processing. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. word to vec is a really interesting technology that looks at the problem, really, of how do you take words and encode them. The previous encoding that we saw was basically using sort of dummy variables and indexes. You're taking each word and you're turning it into a word number. That's an effective way for the end-to-end -end neural networks and it worked well, but as you get bigger and bigger vocabularies that just does not work as well. word to vec is a way of taking words and transforming them into vectors. And vectors in linear algebra, you do all sorts of uh, operations between them. You can do those sorts of operations on word to vec and it does some really fascinating things. word to vec basically puts words in vector space close to each other that are pretty similar. Um, I saw this uh, posted on, on Twitter. I thought it was pretty funny on word to vec Cappuccino, espresso, tea, croissant. The lady there is saying, espresso, but I ordered a cappuccino. And the little robot says, don't worry, the cosine distance between them is so small, they are almost the same thing. So that's where you do have to be a little careful with it, but those two words are very similar and they would have a pretty close word to vec uh, mapping. And I give a link to the original source for that particular cartoon. So the suggested software that I have for word to vec is the GitHub News Vectors. This takes a lot of memory. I am using a, I'm using the full large Google dictionary with the large um, encodings. This is a technology that I used on a Kaggle competition where you were given two questions, uh, the Quora challenge, and you were supposed to tell if those two sentences were the same. I used this technology heavily in that challenge, and in the end, I was in the top 7%. So it, it worked pretty well. It got me decently, decent, decently high up in that particular competition. We're going to use the big Google uh, News vectors. If you click on on this it takes you to the github mirror for this this is a pretty big file we're using that um, the 300 so that's 300 length vectors for using training from Google News on words if you try to download that they won't let you download it directly because it's simply too big it's 1.53 gigabytes so yeah that's how big it is gzipped we need to download that and then represent that into RAM so I was using I was using a fairly big if your computer has 16 gigabytes of RAM this will this will probably work I was using 32 just to be um, just to be safe there let me go ahead and go back into my I am going to go ahead to and show you what this looks like memory wise so I am going to create a new terminal so this is a Linux terminal on my on my instance it's just your typical Linux sort of command prop. I'm going to run a command called top. And if you've never seen top before in Linux, it's kind of like process manager. I won't get into what everything is going on here, but look at, in particular, the, the memory. Okay, the memory is being showed in kilobytes. You, you can hold down shift and E and that'll switch. So now we're in gigabytes. So if you do a lot of high performance computing, you tend to use this, you use top a lot if you're working in, in, in Linux anyway. This is the amount of free memory that I have. So this is, this is a 30 gigabyte machine that I'm using through, through AWS. So it's, a, it's decently large. You can get a heck of a lot bigger than that though. You can, you can go very large on, on memory for sure with, a, with AWS, but 32 gig is enough. This is what I like about using AWS instances for this. I don't have to buy a large computer and have it sitting under my desk, uh, losing value very, very quickly till eventually in the future sometime I take it to technology recycling day. I don't need a 32 gigabyte computer very often, but when I do, I can lease it from Amazon for less than a dollar an hour. So I, we're gonna see how that decreases when we start to load this. So this command you can run here, it will download it for you. I already had this file downloaded on my on my instance, so I did not need to re-download it. It goes fairly quickly depending on your internet speed. This part 
will take a little bit longer though. This is where we're importing Jenison, which is the Word2Vec handler that I like to use for Python. It's a pretty good one. I will go ahead and run that and it will load Word2Vec into the into the memory. And that takes takes a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and run that cell and then I'm going to flip back over to here and you'll see my memory start to go down. So 30.3 and while that is going down it is basically loading that. If I just had six, if I just had eight I know it would run out. 32 might be a little bit much. I could probably get by with this on a 16 gigabyte instance. But we'll see how far that goes down. I will let that run and probably speed that up just a little bit. It, okay, it appears to be done, or at least the part of it that eats up the memory is is done. We're left with 24, so yeah, it would it would. I tried this previously on my eight gigabyte instance, and that um, that didn't work so well. So now it's loaded in. I will point out this particular warning: slow version of this basically means my packages are not all up to date. And that's quite true because I am running a older version of, um, not an older, older version, but I'm running still the version of TensorFlow that I used for the class and that stays the same throughout. So due to a dependency on that version of TensorFlow and the latest version of Gensim, uh, it, can't, it can't access its data quite as quickly as it would like. So that might be why that load took a little bit longer, but it, um, it won't hurt the examples that we're going through here. So first let me show you just what one of these vectors looks like. We're just using the word hello. So model, which is what we loaded in, that is just a dictionary. So we're going to show the entry for hello. It's been loaded into W and I'll print the length of it. It's 300. So think of this is pretty much, um, you can see why this is so big. If I print, so when I print out the length of the model, it's, it's each word is 300, uh, 300 numbers. We can see this here. That is what hello looks like. So the, this is a vector with all of these numbers that almost defines in high dimension space. So 300 dimension space, a point. And that's where the word hello happens to be. Nearby are other words that are closely related to hello. And that's why this is gigabytes long. This is 300 floating point numbers just for hello. And there are, I think probably tens of thousands of words in that dictionary, all total, all built from Google News. So let me show you how you can do some sort of linear algebra on this. You have cat and you have dog. And if we run this, it looks up those two vectors and I just calculate the, the distance between them and print that out. If I put something like cat and, I don't know, car, the distance is much bigger. Now what you have to be careful with, lexical and, I mean, there's, there's text analysis. Cat and car is only different by two letters. So sometimes you will, you will compare two words using the distance between them, so how close they are. So like my name, Name, Jeff and Jeffrey is pretty close because J-E-F-F -F starts the beginning and you just have that R-E-Y on the end. That's a common type of text analysis, but cat and car are pretty close in, in spelling, but very different in terms of what they, what they mean. So we can put it back to that. And we could try the example from earlier here. Uh, she wanted a cappuccino and a so they're about the distance between between cat and dog. So the robot is probably overstating that a little bit in the comic where he's saying they are practically the um, uh, practically the same thing. I don't know, two other drinks that are very similar like Coke and Pepsi. Huh, not so not so similar. So that's that's kind of interesting. Coke and pop similar. So those words prob might not have appeared all that often in the Google News uh, as as being close and similar to the uh, similar to the same thing. So you you can try different words here. You can load the code that I've provided you and and experiment with that. We could do king and queen, which gets into my next example. Again, more similar. But this is where you can do math on it. And this is really interesting. This is an often cited example that you can do queen equals king minus man plus female. So if you take the concept of a king, you subtract man from it, it becomes something like monarch. But then you add female to it and it becomes 
um, it basically becomes king, or I'm um, sorry, queen. So if we run this and ask for the most similar to this, this sort of equation written, written here, it comes back with queen. Also monarch or perhaps princess. So that's, that's actually pretty, um, pretty cool that it is able to do expressions like that. This is very useful for natural language processing because you can take these vectors and put them in for the um, for the words. This still takes a lot of memory. So you're dealing with 300 inputs for each word, but that's a lot better than maybe I've seen dictionaries with 65,000 words in them than having 65,000 dummy variables. So this is another encoding type that you that you can make use of. Show you some other things that word to vec can do that is pretty interesting. The following code shows you which item does not belong with others. So I have breakfast, dinner and lunch, and cereal. While cereal is something you can eat for breakfast, it is not really like the like the other ones, and it can figure that out. You can put really anything you want to in here. Um, car, truck, man, cat, and it'll say cat. Um, house, garage, um, store, and dog. I've never tried any of these. We'll see, we'll see if it works. Dog, good, okay. Uh, it was making me lose faith on it a little bit up there with Coke and Pepsi, but I bet that is the nature of, there, since they're different companies, Google, um, Google News probably mainly has samples of those where they're being referred to more as their um, as their companies. And that shows you the similarity between two um, two words more as a percent. So we can do that. There they're more different. So it's definitely it's definitely thinking of those as um, as as companies. If we do colors, I don't know what it does. If we do things like iPhone and and iPhone and Android, since they're very different. Um, you can tell Google made this, I guess. And then you can find words that are the most similar uh, between, between some of these. So dog, puppy, pooch, cat, golden retriever, rottweiler, all of these. And then I have some more uh, links that you might want to explore further on LSTM. This is un the un unreasonable effectiveness. This is pretty interesting. It learns to generate. So you train an LSTM on works by a particular author, and it learns to generate text that sounds surprisingly like what um, that's, that author might generate. LSTM music generates music, some YouTube videos of music that was generated with it. And then some an earlier paper that led into some of the research that I had there where trying to do natural language processing essentially from scratch. So forget WordNet, forget all these other things that we've created to help natural language processing. This just shows you essentially how to, um, how to do that from, from scratch. All right, this is all I have for this module. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to take these various packages that we've learned to use Spacey and word to vac and use those to work in conjunction with Keras for natural language processing. This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.